Hey, good morning. Hi, Barry and Margo. Did Kara make it? Saying a prayer that she would. Hi, Mary, my Aunt Mary. Good morning to you. Nancy Horvath and Kip also. Good morning. Hi, Judy Martin. Ruth Circle is meeting today. That's correct. Hi, Sandy Sauerbeck. Hi, Don Jones. Good morning to you. It is nine o'clock. On the dot, I've got Scott Johnson. Hello. Welcome to March, everyone. It is March 1st, 2023. Did you ever think we'd get here? Good, I'm glad she made it. Hi, Norma Bentley. I hope your basement is drier today and your windows fixed. When multiple things go wrong, it, it's, it gets t difficult. You certainly have been pushed through an awful lot there between the storm and everything. Okay, Don. Bernice. Rhiannon. 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 Is that it? I think it's Rhiannon. Okay. I have difficulty pronouncing names sometimes. It gets kind of humorous. If you don't get offended, it's humorous. <laughs> so. I hope everybody's doing well. It's going to be a nice day. It really is. We had some mixed precipitation this morning when I took the dog out, but now, now it's dry. We never did get much. So uh, looking forward to a good day. And as far as stuff that's going on, remember Thursday. Uh, so we've got uh, um, the circle is uh, meeting today. Hi, Larry and Carolyn Thomas, Joanne Butters. And... Uh, The roof circle is today, and then we're also, um, it is, uh, it's Wednesday, so I assume that there's probably a choir rehearsal today, right? And um, then tomorrow, oops, sorry, just lost that page. And then tomorrow, we are uh, into Thursday, right? And so there was actually going to be uh, an endowment committee meeting. So, all right. I don't know that song, unfortunately, Don. And, uh, oh, Thursday evening, grief share, loss of a spouse. There you go. Kicking off, right? So there you go. We got, oh, the basement is drier and cleaned up, thanks to your son-in-law and daughter. Very good. Okay, so things are getting better. Okay. Hi, Joy. Good morning. Joy and Steve Yamber are friends from Concord who have been out of power for a long, long time. And then when it came on, they found out that they had all this electronic stuff that probably got that got fried, right? So, yeah, lots of stuff going on there. I hope those things are resolving themselves, Joy. And I know you got heat now, right? I saw that on Facebook, but all that other stuff. So, and, and you know what? On my way in today, just so you know, um, I, there's still people that without power around here, I'm, not many, but there's still some. And, you know, uh, I come in, I come down Outer Drive and then get on Southfield and uh, South and then come right into Allen Park that way. And um, that uh, that light there, um, just uh, where, by Enterprise Drive there, that's still out, still out. It's been out for a week now. So, man, we're just getting so tired of the... This was a big storm. It ends up being a big storm. So, all right. Are you ready to get moving today? It is 9.04, so we should be moving over here into our into our uh, devotions. Hope everybody's doing well. Say hello in the chat box. And if you, uh, if you have something that you would like to include in the prayers, put that in there. Uh, and uh, I'll go back and take a look. So, um, but I do apologize. I know sometimes... Um, I might overlook something, and if so, or it comes in a little bit late because there is a bit of a delay from the time that I say it to the time you hear it. So we are behind uh, 
we're running behind a little bit. So if I miss it because of that, I am sorry, right? But uh, you can always submit a prayer request online. So many ways to do that uh, on our website. You can do it direct. It comes direct to me. So we're going to do our devotions today, and uh, I'm going to do my breathing. I'm going to call it a discipline, right? Just to push out all the stuff that's clogging up my head and let uh, let uh, the Holy Spirit illumine my mind to God's Word. So if you'd like to join me, feel free. I right, breathe in for five, hold it for five, exhale for five. Here we go. All right, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. All right, we're, our first devotion is Psalm 5. All right, we hear this one on a fairly regular basis. Let's listen for God's word for us today. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths, their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. So ends this reading, the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. We've heard that one before. Mm. All right. Are you ready for Deuteronomy? We're continuing on into Moses's word to the nation of Israel, and we're going to read out of chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. Tomorrow, if it continues on, we'll hear about Moses's prayer. You know, there's Jesus's great prayer for us, right, that he prays while he's in the Garden of Gethsemane on, on the, the night that he was betrayed, right, before the betrayal. And uh, he had told every, he had told uh, that, you know, the, hey, stay awake. I'm going to go up here and pray in this olive garden. And he goes there, and there he prays for us, right? Um, and, uh, and he says, you know, let give give my brothers and sisters, right, your children, give them the grace and the care and the love that you've given me. Well, this is Moses speaking to God, right, and, um, and he, the people, but he also ends up talking to God in a prayer. We're not going to hear that today, probably tomorrow, because it starts, I think, at about, Deuteronomy 9, 25, somewhere in there. Um, but it's right after this anyway. So um, but so this is getting to the end as far as his instructions to the people. And then he turns to God and says, I gave him everything. Now, will you do something for me? And um, so, but we'll hear about that. All right, let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today out of Deuteronomy 9, cha uh, chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. Furthermore, the Lord said to me, I have seen that this people is indeed a stubborn people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of you a nation mightier and more numerous than they. So I turned and went down from the mountain. While the mountain was ablaze, the two tablets of the covenant were in my hand, two hands. Then I saw that you had indeed sinned against the Lord your God by casting for yourselves an image of a calf. You had been quick to turn from the way that the Lord had commanded you. 
So I took hold of the two tablets and flung them from my two hands, smashing them before your eyes. Then I lay prostrate before the Lord as before, forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all the sin you had committed, provoking the Lord by doing what was evil in his sight. For I was afraid that the anger that the Lord bore against you was so fierce that he would destroy you. But the Lord listened to me that time also. The Lord was so angry with Aaron that he was ready to destroy him, but I interceded also on behalf of Aaron at that same time. Then I took the sinful thing you had made, the calf, and burned it with fire and crushed it, grinding it thoroughly until it was reduced to dust and threw the dust of it into the stream that runs down the mountain. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So when Moses goes up the mountain, remember he had to go twice, because the first time he goes up, um, he takes Joshua with him, but Joshua doesn't go all the way up. But while they were up there, the people, now we need to remember, God's original intent was for the, everyone to come up the mountain and hear it. And they got scared, and they told Moses, you, you, you go up. You go up and then come down, because we're scared. So Moses does goes up, and, but, but while he's up there for this extended period, they panic. They say, oh, who's going to lead us, right? Joshua, who had stepped up, was, was not there. Um, and uh, Moses was not there. And so what do they do? Aaron, Moses' brother, um, they take all the gold that they had brought with them from Egypt, and they melted it down, and they made it into a golden calf. And they worshipped it, right? Which is, and um, so when Moses comes, God tells him, hey, you better go down and see what they're doing. And when he does, Moses destroys the stone tablets. He ends up going back up again. So, so we can read about this twice, right? And you can also read the Ten Commandments twice because we have it in um, two places. We have it in Exodus, which is the first time, and then we have it in Deuteronomy. And it's a lot of fun sometimes to compare the two accounts, especially the Ten Commandments, and see how, they, how they're similar and how they're different, right? If there's not a big difference, but there are some slight differences, and, and, I, and uh, that's kind of an interesting thing to do sometimes. So uh, I wrote a paper on that in seminary. So. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to move to uh, Hebrew? Uh, we're moving to the New Testament where we're continuing on in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Okay. Oh, before we leave Deuteronomy. So I want you to remember that as we read that, that as favored as the um, Hebrew people were, that they themselves were completely imperfect also, right? They were stubborn, and, uh, and they misbehaved, so, but, but God still loves them, right? And, um, and I think that's important for us to know. And um, um, so even, we are imperfect, right? And, and we're going we're gonna to make mistakes. We are, uh, we're going to get involved in stuff that we shouldn't and get in deeper than we know what to do with, but we always have a God that, that will lovingly embrace us and lift us for, out, of, out of any despair that we are and let us know that we're loved if we let him, if we let him. So I guess my word of advice is to you is to, during this time of Lent, you're going to deny yourself perhaps, <clears throat> but the thing that we have to do during Lent is this. How are we going to let God love us? How are we going to change our lives or add something into our lives to let God love us? There you go. All right. So let's read in our New Testament reading, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God but exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners of Christ, if only we hold our first confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. 
Now, who were they who heard and yet were rebellious? Was it not all those who left Egypt under the leadership of Moses? But with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, if not to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So um, there's a couple ways to investigate this. Um, number one, um, it was 40 years, but there wasn't anybody that was left that had been come out of Egypt. So these were new people. And as I said, the unbelievers, the people who went along because slavery was bad and they wanted, you know, but then they got there and they, they complained all the time, right? Those people were all gone. So the believing, the believers were the people that were about to enter into, into the kingdom, the new kingdom, anyway. And we're the same way, right? We're, we are in the wilderness, and um, we're coming to a promised land that God has promised, and, and that's the kingdom of heaven, right? So, okay. So be believers. It's okay to be, have times of questioning, right? We should, because that will strengthen our faith if we work our way through that. Okay, let's read from John, the Gospel of John, and it's uh, um, oh man, this is what we're this is what we're going to read this is what we're going to read this Sunday. Hmm, okay. Well, I won't tell you anything about it. We'll just read it. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, you won't come to church on Sunday. I didn't realize that this was the same. Here we go. So this is after John, early in the Gospel of John, but uh, and he and he, he advances the story very quickly. And so we have already heard about uh, the the uh, turning over the tables and the beating of the money changers in the temple. And uh, so here we go. It's Jerusalem during the Passover. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. When he, Jesus, was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone, for he himself knew what was in everyone. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So our sermon title for this Sunday, where we're going to pick up this again, is uh, Dear, Dear Nicodemus. So Nicodemus, a Pharisee, right? And um, so a law keeper, somebody who knew the law in and out. And uh, Jesus is pointing out that um, he's a little too serious about everything. He's a little too literal, or maybe a lot literal about these things. 
These are all things we're going to talk about on Sunday. So I'm not going to talk any more about this because otherwise you might not listen on Sunday, right? Okay. So we're going to go back and take a prayer. So I hope you're all doing well. Have you noticed something different about me? I got all my hair cut. So and I trimmed my beard. So um, I feel so weak now. <laughs> so finally decided, got to do it. Got to do it. So, all right, let's see here. We've got... Um, Joanne Butters, hello. I think I said that. And then, we got, oh, here we go. Ken Woods, hello. Carrie, thank you for posting all this stuff up. Thank you for putting that link into the website where all that information can be found. Oh, okay. Kevin Vaughn can't get log into Facebook. Okay. But he's come through well, and he's thanking everybody for their prayers and positive thoughts. He got home yesterday. So, hi, Ann. Cindy finally got it. Good, good, good. Oh, praise God. Little Ava, who we pray for. Uh, everything is stable with her. That's wonderful news. So that's prayers of thanksgiving right there. That is wonderful. Thank you for sharing that information with us, Norma. Oops. Oh, there's Kevin. Very good. Glad to see that you're on. All right. Are we ready? Are we ready to, to pray? A lot of prayers of Thanksgiving today. We've just heard some great news about Ava and also for uh, and also uh, Kevin. So, Kevin, you're healing. So now we now we pray for Chris, right? Because she's the one, she's the one that's got to take care of you. So <laughs> we'll pray. We'll pray for strength for her and patience, right? And patience. All right. I joke. I joke. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly God, we come to you in, in thankfulness today, uh, as we read your word and. Uh, as uh, our hearts were illumined about uh, the, the constant call that you make on us, uh, the yearning that we have to know you deeper and better. All of these things are of the Spirit, and Lord, we need to train ourselves so that we're more responsive to the things of the Spirit than we are so easily to take up uh, the attractions of the flesh. So, uh, Lord, uh, we just pray that uh, you will continue to keep us in the umbrella of your grace and your mercy. And we want to give you and start off with thanks today. We want to thank you uh, for the wonderful news that Ava's scans have come up stable, that she continues to battle this, uh, this cancer. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that you continue to give her healing and strengthen her and her family. Lord, we thank you for delivering Kevin safely through his shoulder surgery and now, of course, we do pray for a quick healing for him. We pray for Chris, who's uh, caretaking him. Lord, all of these things. Uh, but uh, we couldn't have asked for a better outcome than to know that our good friends are doing well. And uh, we also pray for uh, uh, Rihanna, Rihanna, Don's niece. We uh, pray for her comfort and safety and healing. Lord, we pray for all. And we know that there's numerous people that continue to be without uh, heat and uh, power. Lord, uh, we, we pray that uh, they will be returned quickly and that uh, everywhere will have uh, all of the electricity, not only to live, but also to let us drive safely. So all, the, all our stoplights will be working once again. And uh, Lord, one more thing as, as we prepare to go about our days here. We can't understand the enormity of what was done for us in Jesus Christ. But in this period of Lent, we just ask you to allow us to draw closer so that our hearts are softened and, Lord, our minds are opened and that we will be attentive 
to the spiritual callings that you give to us. We do pray all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen all. God bless you all. Remember, uh, I love you, right? God loves you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how, okay? So you have a wonderful day in the Lord. If there's anything we can do for you, just reach out and let us know. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.